Carrots here and welcome to my tutorial on how to build a port. I chose to build my port in Roaring Heights because Roaring Heights seems to have a lot of nice deep water. This is Katie Kingston. She's going to be my testing sim for this build. I've placed Katie in a small house in Roaring Heights and her first job for me is to go to the spot that I've chosen to build the port because I want to make sure before I start building that she can actually get to it easily so I can build my port. Now when you build a port it has to be on a lot that is partially on land and partially on water and another thing is the lot needs to be big enough to fit across both land and water and have enough of it in the water, in deep enough water, for you to be able to put a gangplank for your houseboat. Because this port is going to have a houseboat and Katie is going to move into that houseboat and she's going to drive it around for us to make sure that she can and that the port actually operates as hoped. Now the first thing you need to do, I had to get her off the lot for a start, or off the spot where I'm going to place the lot. So we go into Edit Town and pick the lot size. Well, of course, Edit Town will throw me across somewhere I don't want to be. I was so careful to keep it over the top of the spot that I'd chosen, and the game being the game, as soon as it got into Edit Town, it shot me across to some other completely different location. So now I've got to go back. Luckily Katie didn't move too far away from the lot so I should be able to make sure I've got the right one. That's that little beachy looking thing there. So I've chosen a 40 by 40 lot because I think that's probably about the smallest that you can actually use to make a working port. It's partially on land and partially in the water I've got to try to judge what I think will be enough to get it into the water. I haven't actually tested the water depth and I'm hoping that it's going to be deep enough. Now once you've got your lot placed then you need to go and change it to community lot and port. So that's easy enough done. Lot type changed. Now we go into the lot into in build mode so click on the build icon and then click on the lot or you could save at this point if you wanted to we haven't done much yet but it's a good idea to save as you go it releases memory reduces the chance of a crash and also if you do get a crash you don't lose everything you've done so here we are we're on the lot now you use a foundation tool to do this we're in build mode and in build mode you choose the tool which is for platforms, foundations and decks. The arrow shows you where to look to click just on the edge of the floor. And once you've got that tool correctly clicked you see the various platforms, foundations and decks that are available to you. The stilted foundations came with Island Paradise expansion pack and you will need to have it installed to see the stilted foundations. If you don't have Island Paradise installed then you won't be able to build the port. Now each of the three stilted foundations is a slightly different price. The cheapest being wood and the most expensive is steel. There's only about one simoleon each between each of them but it's per tile so it does make a difference depending how big you want your port to be. Now I chose the concrete foundation to build mine. Now when you're building a port it's very important that you must start from the water. You don't start from the land. If you start from the land you're going to have massive problems and it won't work. Now I've just picked a random spot. I think I should have thought of it better but I was lucky in the end. This is considering I've got a smallish sort of a lot. I did sort of have a think about it. I made it 
5 tiles wide by 40 tiles long, which is 200 tiles, and at 6 simoleons a tile, that works out at about 1200 simoleons for that little jetty or port. The next step is to put on some steps. Now, I played around with them for a bit and I eventually got them right. I decided I wanted the steps to be four tiles wide because this is a public jetty, it's not a private home and any sim can come to it. We will add a houseboat to it eventually when the houseboat will belong to an individual household but the port itself is a community lot. So at that position where I've put those steps, you only need one step for the sim to step up onto the jetty. I'll put a little fence across the top there so that it would look safe for my sims. I'm also going to have to adjust that terrain a bit more because we need to have room for the new steps I'm going to place at that position to actually work and they're not going to work how I've got that terrain. You don't really need steps down to it but I just wanted to put them there to show you how to get them to work and what sort of problems you can have if you don't do it right because steps are very finicky. This is the terrain levelling tool. What I'm going to do is I'll pick a part of the terrain that is relatively flat with the adjoining terrain so that the sim won't have any problem stepping up onto it. Then I'll use the wood tiles because they're free. I can put them as many of them down as I like and then delete them. Get to level a bit more terrain now. I'll take that from the foot of the steps that exist there so that the sim won't get routing errors from those steps. And now we can add the steps down from the top down to the floor. And they work except that terrain shifted a tiny bit. Did you notice that the steps made the terrain shift up a tiny bit? So that terrain now isn't flat and we could have issues at the bottom of those steps so the sim can't actually walk up those steps. But we'll test and see how we can fix it if there is a problem. Now again we will work on this. See with steps they all have a precise height and that is the height that ter the terrain has to be for the steps to actually fit there and they will adjust the terrain to suit themselves but whether or not it actually suits a sim is another matter so let's see I probably won't be able to use those steps I've already placed now I'm going to add a fence across the top there because it'll look safer to me it doesn't help the sims to be safe because they're not silly enough to fall down holes like that but you use fences to direct the sims to stop them from going to places that they will go to and get stuck. Now because I've used that fence and just one long sweep, I've decided I'd like to make it individual parts of a fence. Now I've used the undo key there, control Z is the undo for windows and it works here. If I make a mistake, I try not to make a mistake, I'd hate to delete a bit of that jetty because it's impossible to fix that properly if you've made a mess of that. I've tried before, I've ended up having to start again from scratch. Not with this one, but with previous ones over the years. And now I'll just fill in all those gaps with bits of fences. And that just makes it look like you've got a fence with posts in between the railings. That's a bit tedious, but it does give your fence a nice look. But it's up to you if you choose to do that or not. I just thought I'd show you. Now when I flattened that, I used a tool there on the terrain there. Yeah, here it is especially. Look at this. Now I made a mistake there. I've used the wrong tool. Now let's go down. Now look, that terrain at the top of those steps is moving. So the sim will not be able to use those steps. Same thing has happened here. So we don't have problems with both of those sets of steps. But we will use the tester sim to prove that before we fix it. Put some planks of wood along there for the jetty. You can change the colour because it's Sim 3 and you've got the colour tool that, which is that little palette. Now we're ready to install the gangplank. To find the gangplank we need to go into buy debug. So the first step is to get the cheat box up at the top left corner of the screen 
and to do that you hold down the control and the shift keys together and type C. Then you click into that cheat box that you see in the top left corner of the screen and type testing cheats enabled true. Enter. Now you've turned on testing cheats you can get into by debug. Again you do control shift C to get the cheat box up and then you type by debug on and hit enter and now you will be able to get into by debug which is in by mode. As you can see I'm turning on testing cheats here and then I will get into by debug next. Because we're ready now to put test by debug on we're now ready to do the gangplank and that is found in by mode sort by function filter on island paradise at this point so you don't have to wait forever for it to build the filter because it's only a few items in the island paradise by debug miscellaneous objects section and there's lots of objects there to look through if you don't filter Fil sort on function and choose by debug that question mark there and there is the gangplank now it wouldn't fit for me in this orientation because the lot's too small but I did manage to get it to fit eventually by rotating it 90 degrees I'm pretty sure less than 45 40 you got no hope as I said before I prefer a 64 by 64 lot gives you more scope there it is right at the very end of that jetty and that jetty is as far as that lot will go it can't extend any further that's right at the end so we've got just enough room to put the gangplank now we'll put a houseboat in there shortly but not just yet we'll tidy this up a bit now if you wanted to you could extend your, your foundation out further to have other buildings at the end like you might want to put a cafe or some other community object there because I've now gone out of by debug we've placed that gangplank satisfactorily so it's gone invisible now let's go into the empty houses library I want to place a houseboat and you need to place empty houses and I've just picked a little houseboat I think it's the cheapest one it doesn't matter which houseboat Yes, let's save our changes at this point. We don't want to have a crash and lose everything. So that's saved. And now we're going to go back to Katie. And we're going to get her to buy that house or move to that houseboat. I was sending her home, but I don't want her to go home now because we're going to get rid of that house. So she's got to dial up City Hall and choose a house. And her house is going to be a houseboat. Yes, that's her. That's what we want to do. Yes, that's our correct household. Now she can go to her new home. and We're going to get her to test it out. We're going to test out the steps. We'll see which way she goes so she avoids those steps. She can use that set of steps. Very good. See if she can get onto the houseboat. Yes, straight on. So that's all worked nicely. Now let's see if she can drive the houseboat and where she can take it to and if she can park it again when she comes back with it. I won't show you all of what I got her to do but suffice it to say she went over to that bridge and she couldn't go under it. Houseboats can only go under a couple of bridges in worlds made by EA and that's not one of them. There's a really high bridge in Bridgeport that they can go under and I think that's about it and the other way to get them to go under bridges is to build your own world and make the bridges really high because this houseboat just won't fit so the place that I've put this port would be a good spot if you wanted your sim to just sail around in a small pond and not go driving all over the world once she's been to this bridge I sent her to the bridge at the other end and it's even lower so she's got no chance of getting under either of them and then I got her to come back and park the houseboat at the port and I discovered that to get her to park the houseboat successfully without her screaming about she can't get there I had to tell her to come along to just before the port 
clicking into the water only. And then when she got there, I had to direct her step by step to the point where she could just then park the houseboat. So she quickly gets to the point where she just can't go any further. She reckons there's something in the way. And there is, there's a bridge in the way. So she abandons that little task and goes downstairs to watch TV. That's one good thing about living on a houseboat. You can't have the into the future thingo, whatever it's called, on your lot. So it's been placed in a public location. That's to let you travel into the future. There's some sim doing some exercises. But in this world, Roaring Heights, there's tons of places for you to build ports. It looks like there's lots of spots where you can build them in a location where they don't need to go under bridges to wander around the world. But I don't like my sims going off like that because they end up getting stuck and the houseboats play up on me. I don't usually play with houseboats at all, actually. So you're not going out into the wide world. Turn around and go back again. I think in Sunset Valley I've often had houseboats going, trying to get over the edge of the world. They go way out in the ocean and they can't get back. It requires a reset or a delete of a houseboat after you get the sim off it. Now I'll make her go up to that other bridge but I won't show you all of that because it just takes forever. I can assure you she couldn't get under it. But the interesting thing was coming back, how she, I couldn't tell her to just go back and park the houseboat. I had to go step by step until I got her past the jetty and past the gangplank. And once she got past that gangplank, like on the side that she is of the gangplank now, on this side of the gangplank, she had to come all the way back to there. And I've sped the game up here so she gets there fairly fast. So from this point, she, I couldn't tell her to park the boat. I had to take her past to the other side of that gangplank and therefore she could do it and she can't return to port either because she just doesn't know how to navigate there so it just gets to the point of okay let's move the house back back a bit at a time it's a bit like this in some of the tombs in the world adventure worlds as well you get inside some of the tombs and the sim can't walk about six paces to a set of steps you've got to tell them every couple of paces that you've got to just go to here and you eventually get them where you want them to be now she can do that. So even when I would get her to travel right close to that gangplank, she still couldn't park the boat. I had to take her past the gangplank. It's very dark by the time she actually parked the boat, or the houseboat, and so we'll have to wait till morning now to see her test our steps and to fix the steps, but that is the next thing we're going to do. Now I'm going to go back into Edit Town so that I can fix up those steps. She'll be safely in her home, which is that houseboat. And why is it always night time when I try to do something in my sims? This time I just put the fence up one piece at a time. What you do here with fences or no fences is entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter if it's here or not, the sims won't fall off. It's just how you want it to look. As you can see with those white outlines over the edge of the floor there, you can extend out two tiles actually. There's only one tile showing, but you can stand, extend out two tiles without adding any more foundation. You won't be able to extend at the end because I've taken it to the edge of the lot. I mean, you will be able to if you don't extend to put your jetty at the end to the end of the lot. But if I hadn't taken it out that far, I don't think I would have fitted the houseboat on. The gangplank was just a little bit too wide. Now I'm adding a couple of cleats. I don't think anyone's actually going to park a boat here, but having at least one cleat's a great idea because you can click on the cleats to get your sim to buy a boat. So if you want your sim to have their own little runabout, speedboat or whatever, well then having a cleat means you don't have to go into buy mode to buy the boat. And also it goes directly into their inventory so you don't have to find a parking spot for it. So let's go back into live mode, return to the game, and we'll wait till morning to fix those steps. It's too dark at the moment. So there she is, I clicked on the cleat, and now she's got a list of boats that she can buy. And that went straight into her personal inventory. She wants to join the criminal career. So I've got a few evil sims, but this is one I haven't used. At least I can't remember using her, so she'll be fun to have a new sim. She's got some good traits for badges. So it's morning, it's raining, and we can see the sun coming up. 
in Roaring Heights. So we know she can use that set of steps that she's going to go down now, but can she go up the next set? Well, she refused. No, she can't go up or down them, as I predicted. Because we know the terrain moved. So there's a problem with the terrain at the top and at the bottom. And there's a problem with the terrain on these steps as well, but I think only in one direction. Yet she can come down them, but she can't go up. The way to stop her from running around there would be to put a fence in. That's her evil cackle. So you could actually prevent that running around the steps by finishing off that fence. Not going to worry about that. We're going to fix the problems with the steps instead. Let's go into build mode. To level the terrain to a point where we know the sim can access the steps, we have to level it at the top and the bottom of that set of steps on the right. And we know that she can get up and down those little steps on the left there. Because it was this side that got a bit wonky. See how this terrain came up then? Now let's try it again here. Use the level terrain tool to do that. And now we've got to put some that masonry over the top again. By putting the fence there it just looks better and the sim can still access the beach that's around the port. If you wanted to stop them from actually running around these steps you'd have to fence it off completely. We might have got lucky with that at the bottom of those steps. She might be able to use them. Let's go test and see what happens if she can use those steps now. That's the male person. I went around the outside of the steps. I think by default they'll still choose not to use the steps. You'd have to put a fence in there to restrict them so they have to use the steps. But let's see if she can use them. Yes, she's gone up fine now. Now let's see if she can go down those steps. I don't know why she ran back inside. Oh, she wants to watch TV. Well, she might as well go and watch TV while I fix up a few things. So that's the port that I built in Sunlit Tides. I'll just show you my sim in Sunlit Tides. She had a nice little drive too. This is a witch I use often. She's in my big game. I like Lo um, Lucy. I just wanted to test to see if it was possible to go anywhere on the houseboat and yes the sea, the sea is very shallow but she's getting around but I wouldn't recommend that you choose sunlit tides as the game for you if you want to use houseboats to travel all over the world because it's just not going to happen the sea is too shallow in so many parts of this world but on these little outer islands these tiny little islands it seems to be much deeper. However, there's only a very narrow strip of sea that they can use. 
if she goes much further out, like just a few centimetres really or inches, she'll come to where it's been painted to not rotable. It looks so inviting that ocean out there, but you can't get to it. Now she had no trouble parking this house boat when I told her to park it. I think the sim in Roaring Heights had trouble because I was so far on the other side of the port than where the gangplank was placed. It just all went so smoothly. So you can have a port and a houseboat in sunlit tides but your houseboats are very limited as to where they can go. So if you just want them to be parked at the port all the time so your sim can live in a houseboat, you can do that, no problems. If you can find some deep enough water to put her into. Let's go and have a look at what I've done with the port in Roaring Heights. Those two mooring posts on the left there, added them. The sim can click onto those too if you want to buy a vehicle. I didn't test the menu out itself but I did check to see what happens when you click on one. I think that sims might actually use them as the university mascot gone away. Now I added a bit of decor here, some plants, a few little seats and as a picnic area with an all-in-one bathroom. That all-in-one bathroom came with movie stuff. Now she can test the steps for us properly. I didn't want to make it look too lush because I don't think Roaring Heights is that sort of a place. Not that I play in Roaring Heights very often. I rarely launch that world. I know I should play there more often, but I guess I'll get to it one day. Maybe I'll add it to my big game and have some Sims living in it. So she seems to be able to use all those steps. It's getting to the end of the day, it's getting dark as well. So this is close to the end of the video. So I hope you've got some useful information out of it and that you've enjoyed it. It's a very basic little port but it works and that's what we wanted. Bye bye for now. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon in another video.